Hi there. In this video, I'll be answering a question which requires me to draw a graph including a best fit line, predict an unknown value from that line, and there's a bit of resistors and parallel thrown in for good measure. This is a question from the 2019 National 5 paper. A student is investigating how the length of a wire affects its resistance. The student connects different lengths of wire to a power supply of fixed voltage and measures the current in each length of wire. The measurements taken by the student are shown in the table. A part 1 then says, using the graph paper, draw a graph of these measurements. So here's the graph paper here. At this stage, we only need that in the table of results. The first thing we'll do then is to label the axes. Looking at the first column of the table, you can see that the length of wire increases by 0.2 metres between readings. It must be then that this is the variable that's being changed by the student, what's called the independent variable. Normally, you would put the independent variable on the x-axis, and don't forget the units. The variable that's changing as a result is called the dependent variable, current in this case. The next thing we need is a scale on both axes. For that, we need to look at the maximum values of both length of wire and current. The maximum length is 1.0 meters, and because there are 10 divisions on the x-axis, it makes sense to increase by 0.1 meters each division. That's also the case for the y-axis, since here again, there are 10 divisions and the maximum current is just short of one up. The main thing is to pick a scale so that you can use as much of the graph paper as possible, and also that it's a linear scale. In other words, each division, or big box, has to increase by the same value. We're now ready to plot our points, and we should be drawing them with an X, because a small dot can easily get lost once we draw our line of best fit. Each value for length will be on a major grid line, one of the thick lines on the x-axis, but that's not true for current. You should see that each minor division, or little box in the y-axis, represents 0.02 amps, which is one-fifth of 0.1, since each major division, big box, is divided into five minor divisions, little boxes. So here's the first point, the second, third, fourth, and final point. It should be clear that our line of best fit is a curve, so take a good look at the points and try to draw a curved line that follows the general trend. The best fit line doesn't have to pass through all the points, and if it misses any, you should aim to get as many points above the line as below it. Now that's done, it's time for the next part of the question. Part 2 says, state whether the resistance of the wire increases, decreases, or stays the same as the length of wire increases. Justify your answer. As the length of wire increases, and we move from left to right on the graph, we can clearly see that the current decreases. So for this to happen, the resistance of the wire must have increased. When we're asked to justify your answer, we're basically stating what information we've used in order to arrive at that answer. The fact that current decreases as the length of wire increases. A part 3 says, use your graph to predict the current in a 0.50 metre length of wire when connected to the power supply. All we have to do here is imagine a line going up from 0.5 amps to where it hits the best fit line, then along to where it hits the y-axis. If you've drawn your best fit line correctly, then this should give a current of 0.55 amps. Here's part 4 of the question. Suggest one way in which the experimental procedure could be improved to give more reliable results. So reliability is related to how repeatable the measurements are. It's important here that you don't get that mixed up with the other terms, accuracy, how close your results are to the true value of the quantity you're measuring, or precision, which relates to the number of significant figures a measurement has been made to. So I'd write something like this. Repeat the experiment again and take an average. Or take measurements of current over a greater range of lengths. Finally, this is part B of the question, which takes us away from graphs and onto resistors in parallel. A length of the wire with a resistance of 5.2 ohms is then folded into a rectangular shape, and the ends are joined together. An ohmmeter is connected across the wire between points X and point Y, as shown. State whether the reading on the ohmmeter will be less than, equal to, or greater than 5.2 ohms. You must justify your answer. Right, let's get a bit of space here so that I can explain this one. So, if this is the wire when it's laid out straight, it'll basically act like a resistor of resistance 5.2 ohms. When it's folded into that rectangular shape, there are now two shorter lengths in parallel, and of course the resistance of the wire decreases as length decreases. 
This now acts like two resistors, each of resistance lower than 5.2 ohms in parallel. And when you add resistances in parallel, the overall resistance is always lower than the lowest individual resistance. Here's what I would write then. The reading on the ohmmeter would be less than 5.2 ohms, since there are now two shorter lengths in parallel. If you're really on the ball, then you'll realise that each half length of wire would have a resistance of 2.6 ohms. That's half of 5.2 ohms. And when you add two 2.6 ohm lengths in parallel, the overall resistance, or effective resistance, would be 1.3 ohms. Anyway, you don't need to actually calculate this for the question. Well, that brings us to the end of this video, the first pass paper video I've made in quite a while. I'd actually forgotten how much fun it was to make them, and hopefully you're finding them useful too. For more information on upcoming videos, summary sheets and resources to help you with your physics, visit physics-podcast.co.uk. Thank you for listening.